Hello, Mr. Bill Poker peeps. Welcome to the vlog. I can't even hardly tell you guys what a fun and fantastic week I had. Um, I had days off because of Thanksgiving, so my family was here. We played games, we watched movies, all that kind of stuff. And I had a Black Friday session at Windstar. My son and I go up there every year, and it was one of the funnest sessions that I've ever had in my entire life. I had friends that went up there, me and Rob and Billy, and then we joined some other friends, Greg and Lou, who were up there, and I saw all sorts of people that watched my vlog and said hello and all that kind of stuff, so that kind of feels a little bit like family, so just fun, fun, fun. And there was no pressure. I got to play for like seven hours. My normal session's like three, so I feel like I gotta get it in there. But I knew I could play all day this day, so just no pressure at all, a lot of fun. Um, I expected to play a little bit of 1-3, a little bit of 2-5, and then play in the 1-2-5 PLO mix game, but I was having so much fun at the first table I was at, which happened to be a 1-3 Hold'em game, that I stayed there the entire time. The only negative of the day was traffic was so bad coming from Dallas up to Windstar that when there was an accident, we were delayed one hour. So we got there at noon. We left about 6.30. And so here's some quality poker time. All right, the boys are at Windstar for Black Friday. Let go. Let go. <laughs> So I decided to join in a 1-3 game, uh, started off normal. Uh, guys were friendly enough, but I didn't really know anybody. Um, we didn't get there until noon. We were planning to get there at 11. Uh, we had lunch at 1.30, so I didn't have a whole lot of time before lunch. Uh, it's about 1.25, it's time to go. We decided I'll play to my button and I want on an absolute heater. And with many heaters, it all started with a suck out. <laughs> I have ace of spades, ten of spades, $350. I'm in the small blind. There is three limpers to me. I make it 18. The big blind calls. He's the only one. Uh, flop with $46 comes 10, 5, 3. He leads into me for six. So I shove all in for his effective stack, which is only 125. He makes the call because he has pocket kings. Uh-oh. Anyhow, the board comes out seven. Ace. Two pair, yes. The start of a nice run with a suck out. Won a couple of other small hands and then I played a, another hand against the same guy. He was kind of steaming, especially when I was in the pot. So on this hand, I'm in the cutoff with ace of diamonds, queen of diamonds, I have $500. There are two limpers to me. I make it 18 and he calls in the small blind. The flop with 45 in the pot comes ace of clubs, queen of spades, five of diamonds. I have top two. That's not bad. He checks. I make it 20. He makes the call. The turn with 85 in the pot is the eight of hearts. He checks. I make it 40. He makes the call. The river, 165 in the pot, is the nine of diamonds. He checks. I make it 80. He calls. I show top two and he mucks. A nice little run just before the lunch break. So Billy and I went to lunch. It seemed like it took forever, geez, well over an hour. Um, and then back to some poker. So I'm in the plus one with $575 and I look down at the best hand ever. Ace of clubs, ace of hearts. The end of the gun, who's kind of an old man coffee, makes it 15. I raise it up to 40. Comes back around to him, he shoves all in for 165. <laughs> Only one thing to do here. Of course, I make the call. He has King Jack, and the flop comes Ace 8 8. <laughs> Talking about flopping the virtual nuts. Uh, five Jack, and I stack him off. And I noticed a pattern at this table with a number of these players, and it just helped me just print money. There was a number of guys, if they raised to 20 to $25, they had a very, very good hands. Queens, kings, aces, ace kings suited. But if they only raised to 10 or $13, it means they were weak. Queen 10, six, seven. So I took advantage of that. I'm in the small blind with pocket nines. I've gotten it up to $800 now. The under the gun, who's one of these players, makes it 10. There's three callers, comes to me. I bump it up to 65 and they all fold. Probably the easiest $40 I've ever earned. 
Now, after a while, the tables were getting significantly tougher where they kept replacing players who weren't so good with good players. For example, my buddy Rob came to the table after one of the not so good players uh, got stacked off. Rob was the captain at his previous table. He was up like $400, but he decided, hey, he wanted to have fun. It's Black Friday. Let's play with my friends. So he came over to our table, made our table tougher. But he also got to see some of the Mr. Bill goodness that happened this day. So on this hand, I'm in the plus one with $900. I have Queen of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, the under the gun, the old man coffee guy who had bought back in maybe three or four times. <laughs> he makes it 18. I make the call. The cutoff and the small blind also call. So on the flop, there's $75. It comes Jack, eight, three. I have top pair. Uh, small blind checks, old man coffee, goes all in for 81. I've seen this story before. He may have queens, kings, or aces, but he may have nothing. Like, like ace king, ace queen. <laughs> so I call, everybody else folds. The board runs out 10, four, and he turns over ace king for another nice win for Mr. Bill. So I'm pretty much on fire. It's gonna take the fire department to put out this house, baby. Anyhow, so the very next hand, $1,000, I'm in the cutoff. I have pocket aces. Middle position one makes it 20. I raise it up to 50, comes back around to him. He goes all in for his effective stack of $230. Of course, there's only one thing to do again. I make the call. The board runs out. Queen, Jack, 10, five, seven, and he has pocket tens. Oh, he was the fire department. He put out the fire. <laughs> this was a $500 difference to my bottom line. Although I can't really complain because I ran pretty darn good this day. All right, I played this next hand against my buddy Rob. I am under the gun with pocket nines. I have $800. Uh, I make it 15. The plus one and the cutoff calls. It comes back to around to Rob. He makes it 50. Now I know my buddy. He's got a good hand here, but it's only $35 more. There may be other players calling. I can certainly set mine here. I make the call. The cutoff calls also. So there's three of us on the flop, 169 in the pot. Bingo, bongo, baby. Nine, seven, deuce. I flop top set. It checks to Rob. He makes it 75. Now, I'm trying to tell my buddy I've really, really got a good hand here. I'm not fooling around but I want the other guy to stay too. So I raise, but relatively small. I make it 175. The other guy folds. Rob should know that I am not messing around here. Uh, when we play at Windstar together, whether people like this or not, I don't play as tough on Rob. Now, when we're playing in our regular league or a regular cash game, with all of our friends, we play just as hard on each other. But I don't want to take his money at Windstar. He didn't want to take mine. So I tried to tell him. He made the call anyways. <laughs> So I pretty much told him on the turn of the river, Rob, I've got it, just fold. <laughs> the turn came, he says, you gotta have nines or sevens. I said, Rob, I have nines. I, I even showed it to him. He only had $75 left, so he didn't lose the rest of that. I tried to tell him on the flop, but he didn't really listen. So for the last hour that we played, I had two more of my vlog watching friends join the table. It made the table much, much tougher, but it was so much fun. Uh, Brant Robinette, and Lance, who I had played with at the hideaway, uh, both came to our table. Lance especially, he doesn't like to fold to Mr. Bill. He likes to stack me off. And we had a couple of battles. I got him a couple of times. He got me a couple of times, but it was fun. Just a lot of banter, a lot of fun talk, a lot of interesting talk about football and fantasy football and DFS and poker and all sorts of stuff. But it was just really, really a lot of fun. And shouldn't poker be that way? I mean, <laughs> I'm not a professional, so, I mean, but I want to win money, right? You can be serious and have serious fun too. It was just really, really great. A lot of talk, nobody got mad. Um, we were bantering and giving each other a hard time and teasing each other and just having great fun at the poker table. It can't get any better than that. All right, when I play poker at Windstar or anywhere with my son or some of my friends, we always go and try and sweat each other on a few hands. <laughs> Billy sweated me on only two hands this entire day, and I'm gonna tell you about both of them. <laughs> this is pretty unbelievable. The first hand, I have ace of spades, four of clubs. I'm on the button, I have $600. Uh, the plus one makes it 15, the cutoff calls, and I make the call. The flop with 48 in the pot comes king, deuce, three. I have a gutter ball, nothing too exciting. 
The plus one makes it 20. The cutoff calls, that's enough for me. I make the call also. Uh, the turn with 108 in the pot, bingo bongo, right in the window of five. I have got the nuts, and this table has been playing pretty darn aggressive. Uh, it goes check, check to me. I make it 40. Unbelievable. Everybody folds. I thought for sure I was going to stack somebody off on this hand, but <laughs> Philly said, oh my gosh, Dad, you are the luckiest player. <laughs> oh yeah? Hold my beer, because wait till this next hand, my friend. So I told everybody, I'm on the button. I told everybody, guys, this is gonna be my last hand. I gotta go. We're gonna meet uh, uh, my family for dinner and all that kind of stuff. Last hand of the night. Billy's over there sweating me. I am on the button with Jack of Clubs, nine of hearts. I have $900. There are four limpers. The big blind makes it 15. The cutoff calls and I call. The flop, 52 in the pot, comes king of clubs, 10 of hearts, four of spades. The big blind, who was kind of a younger guy, mid-20s, did not look real, real confident. I think he hadn't played a whole lot. He makes it 25. The other guy folds. I make the call. I got a gutter ball. I'm on fire today. Let's see what happens. The turn, 102 in the pot. Queen of hearts. Bingo ball go, baby. I got the nuts again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, he bets 40. I go all in for his effective of only 100. He, of course, makes the call. I show my hand, and of course, the table goes crazy. Oh my gosh, you're the luckiest player ever. And Billy's just shaking his head. Dad, you are so lucky. And of course, he was having a day that was not memorable. He had a kind of a tough day. So he especially thought, oh my gosh, you are so lucky. I even said it when I put the cards down. I know this is so ridiculous, but this is what run good looks like, people. <laughs> Just a great fun day of poker with my friends. Uh, Black Friday, best poker day of the year. The one poor guy that I stacked off on the very, very last hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Sometimes just, it's like an avalanche. Things were just going so much my way. I was having so much run good that it was just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, that's not really true. I've always said, never be sorry for a winning hand. Ooh, I ran good at Black Friday poker. In for 300, out for 1041. Nice day. I'm sure I'm not conveying this very well, but we just had a hugely fun time and my results were fantastic. Financial results, I won over $800. Uh, mentally, I just had a great time. Um, all my friends were at the same table as me. I had vlog watchers at the same table. We were just yucking it up, having a big time. That is just a great day of poker. And of course, I couldn't run any better. It didn't seem to matter what I had. I was hitting it, except for that one hand where I lost with pocket aces, a $500 difference to my bottom line. But I can't complain about that. I hit pretty much everything else. And my previous session, where I had the no call challenge, certainly had an effect on this session. I found myself not wanting to call very much. I did call a few times, uh, but I kept thinking, should I be raising here and maybe or folding and I didn't really really call very much I love that challenge I'll be doing that one again so after this last week I am so excited to go play again I don't know where I'm gonna play again I'm playing Wednesday Night Poker League tonight and I'm sure I'll play somewhere this weekend so be on the lookout for Mr. Bill say hello if you see me all right evidently the color of the week is black we played on Black Friday I am finally in the black for the year-end results. I know that's embarrassing that I wasn't before, but I am now. I'm gonna have a $5,000 December is my goal, so I'll make it a lot more in the black. I have a lot of PTO coming up, and so I'm gonna get to play a lot more, so I'm sure I can hit that goal of 5K in December. So with that, let's end this vlog. Once again, as always, thank you guys for liking and subscribing and pressing buttons. You guys are the best, Mr. Bill Poker peeps, and have a great, wonderful, fantastic, and blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.